Santa Claus by Mally Maker. A figure, maybe Santa Claus, could be seen flying through the night sky. The moon, covered in gray clouds, helped conceal this mysterious figure. The figure, though shadowed by the cloudy moon, obviously carried a bag. It landed on a house just as the clouds rolled away, allowing a pure white griffin in a red coat and hat to be seen. This griffin, most definitely Santa Claus, set the bag he was carrying onto the rooftop. After rummaging in it for a minute, he found what he was looking for, and walked over to the chimney, then he jumped into it and vanished. A young colt, perhaps five, not even old enough to have gained a cutie mark yet, sat waiting on hearth for Santa Claus. Or he was, until he fell asleep. Santa Claus, being as quiet as ever, came out of the fireplace before setting the present he was carrying under the hearse-warming tree. It was then he noticed the young colt asleep on the floor. It always happens, he thought, chuckling to himself. There's always some little colt or filly that is determined to catch me. They always end up falling asleep before I come, though. I wonder what would happen if one did catch me. Then he remembered one little filly who had seen him the year before. I told her I was allergic to dairy, which, though not completely true, just means I don't like milk, right? Santa Claus pondered. Then Santa Claus, being the kind old griffin he was, picked up the young colt and set him on the couch before tucking him in. Though they never see me, they still believe, he thought, marveling at such devout faith. Since he had countless other houses to go to, Santa Claus took a quick bite out of the cookie that was left for him, and a quick drink of milk, which he knew he would never enjoy. Then he quickly went back up the chimney and on to the next house. The routine was pretty much the same. Go to the roof and down the chimney, then place the present under the tree, and, if a colder filly was sleeping on the floor, place them on the couch and tuck them in. Then he would eat the cookie and manage to down a small gulp of milk. This routine continued throughout the night until he only had Ponyville left to deliver to. Ponyville is quite different from the rest of Equestria, thought Santa Hoops to himself as he flew towards the little town. There's a princess living there, all the elements of harmony, and the CMC. The CMC, he thought to himself. They always have a sleepover and an attempt to catch me. That little one, Sweetie Belle, I think, was the little filly that caught me last year. I wonder if she managed to catch me again. Upon arrival in Ponyville, Santa Claus made quick work of delivering all of the hearse-wearing presents. Delivering Spike the Dragon's present posed a problem this year. With so many chimneys in the castle, he wasn't sure which one to go down. Oh well, he would figure it out when the time came. He slowly glided towards the CMC's choice of sleepover location, which had happened to be Rarity's Boutique this year. He quickly realized the boutique had no chimney. This was going to be tough. He would either have to go through the front door, or through one of the windows. After a bit of observation, he decided the best course of action would be to go through the front door. Quickly, quietly, Santa Hooves opened the front door. Or tried to. It was locked. Thankfully, he had a magic key that would allow him to open any door ever made, in cases like this where no chimney was present. After unlocking the door, he quietly walked into the living room where three little fillies were fast asleep. Or so he thought. After setting the fillies' presents under the tree, he turned to eat the cookie and drink the milk. As soon as he took a drink of the milk, he grimaced. What is this? He asked, mostly to himself. It's Zoe, said a sleepy voice behind him. He quickly turned to see Sweetie Belle looking at him sleepily. As she rubbed her eyes, she continued, Last year you said you were allergic to dairy, so I asked Rarity to get soy milk. That was very thoughtful of you, Sweetie Belle. Though next year, how about some tea? Santos whispered to the sleepy filly. Then he walked over and tucked her in again and said, Go to sleep so we can open your presents in the morning. Okay, Santa Claus, said Sweetie Belle with a yawn. Santa Claus stayed until he was sure the little filly was finally asleep, before leaving the house via the front door, remembering to lock it behind himself. Chuckling over the tail, Sweetie Belle would be able to tell her friends in the morning. Now, on to that castle of twilights, thought Santa Claus as he flew towards the home of Spike the Dragon. Upon arrival, he found that the chimney leading to the room with the tree had been marked with a sign that read, Santa Claus, enter here. Glad that he wouldn't have to go through several chimneys, Santa Claus set his bag down on the roof and quickly dove down the labeled chimney and placed an extremely large gem for Spike to munch on under the tree. And, going through the routine he had done many times before, took a bite of cookie left for him and a small gulp of milk before leaving through the chimney. As he exited the chimney, Santa Claus noticed the sun had slowly began rising in the sky, signaling his return to home where he could get rested up for the next year. As he flew off towards his home, Santa Claus' voice rang out clear in the pre-dawn. Happy housewarming to all, and all a good night!
Hello everyone, this got a little fun, and that was Santa Claus by Melio Maker. Sorry if I mispronounced that. And apologies if my voice sounded a little weird and sounds a little weird now. Remember how I said my entire family kind of got sick? I kind of caught it, so yeah. Anyway, how could I not end this on a story featuring the big S himself? That and the idea Sweetie Belle caught Santa the previous year in this story seem like a good segue from Hooves on the Roof, even if they're not related at all. This story, as with the others I've done, is a simple, fun story. It's about Santa Claus doing his job and delivering presents, and that's really the fun part about it. I imagine we've all had this kind of story play out in our dreams when we were younger. I also find the idea of Santa being a griffin rather unique, as the majority of stories I've seen about Santa and Equestria use a pony named Santa Hooves and it makes this stand out all the more. I also like the bits of character we get on Santa, like how he really doesn't like milk but drinks it anyway for the sake of the kid, or him worrying about finding which chimney in the Crystal Castle go down. Seriously, if it has as many chimneys as it has room, that would be a problem. Anyway, that was the last reading of my Hurtswarming Month. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, and subscribe, and click that bell down there so YouTube will actually notify you when I put up a video. Because YouTube. This has been Godzilla Wolf 1. Merry horse warming and happy holidays! I still don't have a catchphrase.